Palaxis, uh, you'll, you've probably been in touch with this at some point during your life. Maybe you had a friend or yourself who had asthma as a child and had an anaphylactic reaction or possibly you're uh, allergic to some sort of food or, or something. But for most of us have been in touch with somebody with anaphylaxis at some point in our lives. So what anaphylaxis is, is it's not just an allergic reaction, okay? This is a severe, severe allergic reaction with very rapid onset and massive histamine release from the damaged cells. It is life-threatening if untreated. Okay, so what does histamine do? Okay, histamine causes swelling and the inflammation and, and this whole inflammatory response that occurs with uh, like an allergic reaction, okay? But under normal circumstances, as if with an allergic reaction, we have a little bit of swelling, a little bit of this redness, the bumps and things like that. With anaphylaxis, we have massive uh, release of this histamine which causes the severe allergic reaction the patient experiences. So what we're gonna see with our patients is we're gonna see hives, angioedema, respiratory complications, cardiac arrest, hypotension, skin flushing. Okay, so some of the things that, that this can be a result of, it could be a result of asthma, it could be a result of medication, it could be food, or it could be like a bee sting or something like that. Um, what happen a lot with uh, some patients is with ACE inhibitors, they can develop like an allergic reaction um, and go into this angioedema. Um, but hives, you all know what hives are. Angioedema, this is facial swelling. And what more specifically happens is the tongue starts to swell uh, and the face starts to swell. The concern with this is that if the tongue swells, right, that's right near our trachea, okay? So if our tongue swells, our face swells, what can happen there is it can cut off our respiratory tract and if that happens of course the patient is not going to be able to breathe causing those respiratory complications we can also have cardiac arrest which of course is clearly a huge problem patient can experience hypotension and this can be as little as a little bit of hypotension versus severe hypotension you know 70s over 30s or whatever where the patient is 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 not going to be able to perfuse appropriately the patient may also experience skin flushing Okay, so that's some of the things that we're going to see when our patients who develop this, um, this uh, anaphylactic reaction, okay? So what's some of our therapeutic management? First thing we're going to do is we need to assess for allergies. Okay, so what you see here is a patient who is being assessed for allergies. What they do with these allergy skin test things is they put a little sample of a whole bunch of different kinds of allergens, known allergens, peanuts, bees, pollen, whatever it is. They give these little tiny doses of it, and then they mark each one, and then they cover them up, send the patient home, patient comes back, and they'll then remove you know, this tape, and they'll look at which numbers are inflamed, which ones are swollen, and then they'll be able to assess, okay, well this patient, so let's say this one develops a redness and hive, and this one does, so we could say, okay, well this was uh, peanuts, and this was, um, you know, whatever, this was pollen or hay fever, whatever. So by doing this, we can determine what the patient is uh, allergic to specifically, and then we can provide medications, we can provide the things necessary to try to prevent uh, an anaphylactic reaction. Another thing we're gonna administer is epinephrine. We'll talk about this in just a second. We're gonna administer oxygen, of course. We're gonna make sure the patient has a patent airway, and we're gonna assess respiratory status. We're gonna administer antihistamines. Remember, we talked about histamines are what are released during allergic reactions. They are what lead to the swelling, the inflammation, and so administering antihistamines, we're going to counterbalance that effect of the histamine, okay? So that's what histamine, antihistamines do, is they just counter that inflammatory response. We're gonna provide fluids as needed. And as we said, we're gonna assess respiratory and cardiovascular uh, status. If you have a patient who comes into the ED with angioedema uh, related to uh, medication reaction or bee sting or whatever, the patient's gonna get steroids, They're gonna get something like Benadryl. Um, they're gonna get antihistamines, et cetera. And then they're going to come up to the ICU most likely. Um, and we're gonna monitor that patient very closely, giving them steroids, Benadryl, uh, scheduled. And we're gonna hook them up to a monitor. The reason we bring them to ICU is just to monitor that respiratory status. Um, and if the patient begin, if that swelling does not decrease or it does not improve, the patient would then need you know, intubation um, and more aggressive uh, approach to that. So 
But yeah, we put these patients on close monitoring, and not because they are critical, but because they are there's a potential for um, intubation, et cetera, with these types of patients. Okay, again, the types of medications we're going to give, epinephrine, oxygen, steroids, Benadryl, okay, antihistamines. Those are the types of medications we're going to give to these patients um, to try to reverse the effect of this anaphylactic reaction. Let's talk really quick about EpiPen. Sure, you've heard of EpiPen before. EpiPen is a um, quick dose of epinephrine. Why epinephrine? Okay, what is epinephrine? Okay, we know we have our um, SNS, our sympathetic nervous system. Within our sympathetic nervous system, we have adrenergics. Adrenergics are a type of medication that simulate the response of the sympathetic nervous system. One of these such medications is epinephrine. Okay, so a sympathetic nervous system is going to release epinephrine and norepinephrine. And what happens there? So, so when we talk in sympathetic nervous system, we're talking fight or flight. Okay, and so what happens when we have this fight or flight response, this sympathetic nervous system response, is our airway opens up, we, our, our heart rate speeds up, we put more cardiac output out, we open our airway, we, we become ready for a fight, right? We, we get ready, we don bronchodilation, we get all prepared, we can bring in more air, we can pump blood better. Um, and so what happens here when we give this epinephrine, epinephrine is it simulates this response. So by giving that quick burst of epinephrine, we open up our airway, right? And we make sure the patient is able to breathe and we try to counterbalance this uh, allergic reaction. Okay, that is the purpose of epinephrine. It's going to simulate the response of a, a, a sympathetic nervous system response um, and kind of that fight or flight response, opening that airway, okay? So that's really kind of what we need to know about anaphylaxis. Again, anaphylaxis is the severe reaction causing massive histamine release. Histamine release. That's going to, to, to cause this swelling, this um, inflammation that's gonna close off our airway potentially. It's going to cause um, hypotension. It's gonna cause these hives. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna give these steroids to try to decrease swelling. We're going to get Benadryl to kind of counterbalance the allergic reaction. We will give epinephrine, as we talked about here, to simulate this fight or flight response, open up the airway, make sure the patient is able to breathe. Okay, that's really the basics of anaphylaxis. Uh, if you have any questions, always be sure to reach out to me and let me know. We'll talk to you soon.